The Wide Angle with Karen Coleman on News Talk 106 to 108. Now, uh, lots of reactions so far on our stories. Mike says, if Fina Gale don't retract that comment about getting into bed with Sinn Féin, I'm going to reverse my decision and vote for Fina Fall in the locals, European and our, well, Mike says, our late 09 general election. Um, Eamon from Terenur says, Karen, the problem is the electorate. We keep on time after time electing people who have absolutely no idea. Then we elect their sons and daughters, wives, brothers, sisters, nephews and nieces. We should know by now that politicians cannot run a country, the only thing that they can do is get themselves elected. We need more non-career politicians like George Lee to stand up and put themselves forward. So says Eamon from Terran. You're another listener says, Fine Gael has to be the luckiest political party in history. If they'd won in 2007, they would have been blamed for the Fianna Fáil-led economic collapse that was coming anyway. Yeah, good point. Gemma says, good morning, Karen. Could the people refuse to pay the increase in taxes to bail out Anglo banks and builders as it is not our debt we are being dictated to? And Anthony from Dublin on the religious orders, um, child abuse story, which we will get to. Anthony says, as CORI, that's the conferences of the religious organ- orders in Ireland, hide behind the cowardly legal indemnity Fianna Fáil set up to allow these monsters ac- escape justice. Bertie Hearn is the real architect of the sweetheart deal, which protects sadistic, evil clergy who destroy the lives of innocent, vulnerable children, but who will never face any form of justice in our banana republic. Um, we will get to that story after. It's Paul Anthony McDermott, just moving on, I suppose, a little bit more on the political front. Um, the by-elections, the two by-elections in the middle of this, it does look like the Fine Gael candidates will still, are still set to take over uh, those two by-elections as well, which means we would, ha- we would see George Lee in the doll. Yeah, which is a good thing. He's clearly a very intelligent, interesting person. I'm still intrigued by this idea of Sinn Féin going into power. What ministries are you going to give them if you can't give them justice? (laughs) You could give them sport, but that would be the end of cricket, presumably. You could give them finance, but the banks might be a bit worried (laughs) if they come in and see Sinn Féin on the opposite side of the table, this time negotiating. Tourism, foreign affairs, that's going to be a tricky meeting in London when the Sinn Féin delegation... I'm just trying to think of any ministry you could give Sinn Féin. Well, let's ask the man uh, who uh, suggested this. We do actually have Frank Flannery now up on the line, Fine Gael's National Director of Elections. Good morning to you, Frank. Hi, good morning. Now, so is it true, the story that's on the Irish Mail on Sunday, that you indeed would contemplate or Fine Gael going into a a, a coalition government, actually, with with Sinn Féin? I think the point I made was that uh, uh, it it was really in the historical context I addressed it, uh, uh, you know, starting with the old Sinn Féin party of Arthur Griffith and the way different aspects and different elements of that, starting with Common and Wales in 1922, uh, moved from what you might call physical force violence and made their way into constitutional politics. And it's a long line. Fianna Fáil did it in 27. Uh, John McBride and his kind of public uh, grouping did it in 48. Interesting enough, with uh, uh, an unheard of thought at the time with John A. Costello of Common and Fianna Gael and founded that very good government, the first inter-party government. So, then, so it is then, possible. Then, then, yeah. then the line continued with the official Sinn Féin, which morphed into, uh, you know, the Workers' Party, Sinn Féin, the Workers' Party, then ultimately the Democratic left, and which is now part of the Labour Party. And in a way, uh, the current Sinn Féin is following the same track. And I am just blinded by the fact that they are in government in, uh, in the North uh, with the full support of the Irish people through the peace process. And they seem to be doing a very respectable job there. And my point really was that it's something Fine Gael will discuss. Uh, I, I expressed a personal opinion from a historical context. Have you discussed it with uh, Enda Kenny? No, we haven't really discussed it internally at all yet. It's a matter which uh, will arise, I think, possibly when we are approaching the next general election. But what... As, as what, our, gener- as our okay. general election, I, I would just opine a private opinion that there's a historical determinism here uh, that Sinn Féin are becoming and are indeed uh, particularly at, at county council local authority level you know a very significant and strong part of the Irish political scene you can see there 10% in current polls. I see that, but I mean, uh, Enda uh, Kenny uh, has very has vociferously, vociferous sorry Frank, just to mm. put the point here, um, Enda Kenny has very vociferously in the past absolutely knocked down any notion that Fine Gael would go into government with Sinn Féin. He has been very forthright in his condemnations of Sinn Féin's uh, rather timid uh, criticisms of terrorist activities in the past. And so this would be a big U-turn for Enda Kenny if indeed now he changed his mind on that. Well, 
indeed, uh, and, and there's no indication that uh, and the Kenny or even that Fine Gael is changing its mind on anything to do with this at all. It's, uh, this is just a matter of, of uh, it's, it's a personal opinion which I have uh, that, that the history is leading us in a certain direction here. Now, Fine Gael and uh, Sinn Féin obviously have very serious differences in policy. We're totally different in Europe. Uh, they tend to have very, in some cases, old-fashioned left-wing views towards the economy, which I think they are revising. But one way or another, uh, and Kenny hasn't changed his mind on anything, uh, to my knowledge. Neither has Fine Gael even discussed this topic. Uh, in terms yes, but of you, 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 you are a very influential I, I, figure with, you know, with the party, and if you well, are suggesting me, that that might be possible, that seems to just suggest quite just, strongly that uh, you could be I'm, contemplating this in the future, I'm if indeed. Just, well, oh, and indeed. I, I mean, the point I think I used was that it is, a, it, it is in my view, a theoretical possibility for the future. Uh, Can I, mean, I just, before it, we go, it, it, Frank, it would, if, it would, it if it was the option that you had Labour and Fine Gael, not with a majority, they needed a full majority, the Greens only came in with a couple of seats, but perhaps Sinn Féin came in with, um, with more TDs in the doll, would you prefer to go into a coalition government with Sinn Féin rather than the Green Party? I think uh, we, 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 we fought the last election very closely with the Green Party, and indeed they were as strong an opponents of, of the Fianna Fáil outgoing government as we were. So there is that residual attraction there. My concern, quite frankly, for the Green Party is there won't be many Green Party people around after the next general election. But if they were around and available, and if they had in some way got themselves free from their entanglement in the present government, which is enormously damaging to them, then obviously we would talk to the Greens as well. Uh, they are, uh, certainly they were like-minded. Uh, I think one of your panellists there was worried about how closely they are getting almost emotionally and culturally it's been a fall in this government. So we would have to take that into consideration as well. That was, I think, that comment was by Nora Owen, actually, former Fine Gael Minister for Justice. Hello, Frank. So, <laughs> so, well, anyway, OK, Frank. But, but I did point out, I did Nora point out that people do, um, you know, do say things when they're in opposition and they're quite happy then. The PDs did it, the Greens did it, and indeed Labour went in with Fianna Fáil as well and we still uh, went into coalition with them. That's politics. So, I mean, that's politics. Yes. But I, I would, I'm glad to hear your clarification that this is a personal view and that it hasn't yet been discussed by the party. It has not, no. The party has taken no position on this uh, and uh, we, we and, and if, if it is going to take any revised position, it will be sometime around the next general election. I would imagine it's not a matter of immediate current okay. importance to us. Okay, Frank uh, okay. Flannery, Fine Gael's national director of elections. Thank you so much for taking our call. Yes, on that. Okay, bye. Thank you. Let's get some news talk. Uh, 106 to 108 news updates now from Finton, and we'll be back with you shortly.